Hey, in this video, I'm gonna explain to you, with a little help from my buddy George here, why most people never stick to their New Year's resolutions. Now, this video might go a little bit long, because uh, I got a lot to say here, so if you don't have 15 minutes, you know, to put into your future, then by all means, go back to watching your rap videos or whatever you do, and just be one of the average people who can't keep their commitment past January 14th. But if you want to learn the psychological tricks that you can use to make yourself actually keep your commitments for the whole year, maybe even longer, then make sure you watch the whole video because George and I are going to tell you exactly how to do it. Okay, now both George and I might be strikingly handsome, but there's a big difference between the two of us, which is going to be the key to helping you understand how to keep your New Year's commitments, or any kind of commitments for that matter. Now, if you couldn't guess what that is, I'll tell you. The difference is that George is a bear. He is an animal, and I am a human being. Okay, so let's think about why that matters. What's the big difference here? So, consider what George is interested in. George is a bear, so George is interested in just a few things. He's interested in finding honey. He's interested in avoiding hunters. He's interested in girl bears. And he's interested in raising his status and being the alpha male in the bear group, which, as you can see, is kind of small and wimpy, so probably not much hope there, but it'd be nice. Basically, George is interested in instant gratification. He's interested in things that are gonna make him feel good now. Okay, now I'll let George rest for a little while. Now, as for me, I have the same kind of desires as George does, right? I want that instant gratification too, but I also have a human brain in addition to the animal brain, which is capable of thinking, of abstract thought, and of delaying gratification for the prospect of getting something in the future. So maybe I'll go to the gym today because then I'll be healthier and more attractive and, and have better mating opportunities in the future. So I can think about that, and those are, are where these New Year's resolutions come from, right? They come from this thinking brain, the human brain, and as humans, that's half of who we are, and the other half is the animal brain, like George, that just wants honey right now. So if I have the choice today of I can go to the gym and work out, or I can stay home and sit on my couch and watch TV and eat pizza and drink beer, well, it's going to be kind of a conflict in my own mind, because as humans, we all have multiple personalities, right? We have the personality that wants to be productive and wants to make our lives better and wants to do the kind of things that are going to support us in the future. And then we also have that other part of our personality that is a complete loser that just wants to sit on the couch and do nothing all the time. And the reason for that is that we still have this animal brain. This is still a part of us, right? We see honey, we see sugar, we see something that's gonna give us a dopamine hit. We see some easy way to get status points, like uh, posting a funny status on Facebook, right? We get a bunch of likes, right? We're raising our status. We're getting these quick hits of dopamine, this instant gratification, and a part of our brain really, really loves this. And then another part of our brain recognizes that a lot of the time the instant gratification is actually hamstringing us down the road. Now, again, the difference between me and George is uh, George is a bear, and you never really hear much about bears that have built successful businesses or uh, created amazing cathedrals or amazing works of art, right? Animals don't really do that because animals don't really think about the future. They don't work for something in the future. They just they just care about the now, right? They just care about uh, sleeping or eating or having sex or whatever it is they want right now. That's what they do. They're pure instant gratification. So if you want to do something more meaningful with your life than just living like an animal, well, then you have to figure out how to make your human, your thinking brain, actually win the battle sometimes with your animal brain, which is always going to be with you. And part of the reason that that's so difficult is because your thinking brain, your human brain, is, is kind of on some of the time. But it's not on all the time. Your animal brain is on all the time, right? If you see something that would be gratifying to you, you're going to notice it uh, any time of the day. But sometimes your, your thinking brain isn't really working and you see the thing that's gratifying for you and you don't really recognize that that's going to destroy your results in, in your goals in life. So, so you go after the, the sugary dessert or you know whatever it is. So the first thing you have to do is you have to understand 
how you operate. You have to understand that you're not some saintly person who only has these higher order drives and does not have an animal brain because you do have an animal brain and the more you fail to recognize it, the more you overestimate your own self-discipline, uh, the more often you're going to fall into that because you just assumed that the fact that you made this commitment meant that you were going to keep the commitment in the future. And if you have any self-awareness, if you've observed your own actions in the past, you know that it doesn't really work that way. Okay, so how do you move yourself uh, away from the, the instant gratification, animal brain side, to the thinking brain, the delayed gratification side, which is going to make your life better in general? How do you do that? Well, I've come up with three ways that I'm going to show you in this video. And probably some of these are going to surprise you because not a lot of people talk about this. But uh, number one is to reward yourself for good behavior and punish yourself for bad behavior. You know, it's really helpful actually if you'll kind of take a step aside and view yourself like you would view a third party. If you treat yourself like you would treat your child, for example, and you say, okay, I know that you do good things sometimes and you do bad things sometimes, so I'm going to act like I'm a third party and I'm going to set parameters in advance for what happens when you do good things and what happens when you do bad things and basically you agree in advance that you are going to punish yourself when you do something bad and you're going to reward yourself when you do something good and you can do a combination of those you can do one or the other you know you can figure out what works best for you now, now it's a fact of human nature which comes from our animal brain that you respond more towards the threat of something bad than you do towards the opportunity for something good. So if you focus more on the punishment, then for most people that actually works better. Now, the whole point here is that we're trying to align the incentives with our animal brain such that they line up with the goals of our thinking brain. So if you can disincentivize your animal brain uh, from doing the instant gratification thing that's going to shoot your goals in the foot, and you can incentivize your animal brain towards doing things that are actually going to support your goals, then you're not going to have to rely on your willpower so much, which you've already basically proven doesn't work, and you're going to have a whole lot better chances for success. Now, when you're choosing rewards and punishments, basically you want to choose things that are gratifying to your animal instincts. So, a reward, for example, would be something that's going to give you a quick hit of dopamine, some sugary treat, for example. One thing that I used to do that worked really well and may have been a little bit counterproductive, but uh, when I would go to the gym, every time I go to the gym, afterwards I would go to Smoothie King and get one of those big, like, uh, ice cream smoothies. One of those, the, like, I was trying to gain mass at the time, so I didn't really care that I was eating a bunch of sugar. Maybe I should have cared. But anyway, I, I was giving myself some instant gratification as a result of the, the hard work that I was doing towards making my goals in the future. So it's like I'm saying to the animal part of my brain, I'm saying, okay, I know that you don't want to do this. I, don't, I know you don't want to go to the gym, but you're going to get a sugary treat if you do. And then on the other hand, you can punish yourself too. And there's a whole bunch of ways that you can do that. I mean, you can, you can withhold uh, something that you normally would have had if you fail to come through with your commitment. Like if you go to the gym, then you don't have your cup of coffee the next morning, something like that. Or another thing you can use, it works really, really well, is status. Now, you get a dopamine hit whenever you perceive your status is increasing because this is part of your animal brain too because your animal brain has figured out that uh, the, the alpha male of the tribe gets the first pick of women and the alpha male gets the first gets to eat first and all this right so so your status has been joined basically to your your basic biological instincts so when you get a status boost you get a hit of dopamine your body your animal brain really likes that and you can see people kind of going off the rails into some really weird behavior because of that. I mean, if you think about those like PC social justice warrior people who are trolling Twitter for every time somebody says fire man instead of firefighter to go uh, swear at them. So when people go do this virtue signaling thing, it's because they, they're looking for approval from, from some sort of like-minded people. Like if they, if they call out somebody for saying fireman instead of firefighter, then they get a bunch of likes on Twitter from other people that think the way that they do. And they've been raised in this environment that says that uh, by, by whining about all this minutia, then, then they're going to get status approval, right? So they've, they've been conditioned into this, and then whenever they do that, they feel good about it. So they're, they're wasting away 
their time and their energy uh, trying to find status points. And that works on the human brain. If somebody approves of you, if, if you get your status raised, um, you feel good about it normally. And then of course that works in reverse too, and usually even more strongly so. So if you are demoted in status, let's say, that's really, really painful. So what you can do is you can set up a system that will kind of force you to lose status should you fail to meet your commitment. And the easiest way to do that is just to tell people about your commitment and have them hold you accountable. So you tell your best friend that I'm gonna to go to the gym uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday for the rest of the year and then have that person ask you, like put a, put a notification in their calendar Monday, Wednesday, Friday to send you a text message and ask you if you followed through on your commitment and you went to the gym that day. And then if the answer is no, then you have to tell that person no and you look like a loser, right? You're, you're the kind of person who doesn't follow through on your commitments. You don't look good. That's a, a negative hit on your status and it hurts. So the animal part of your brain is going to recognize that and say, hey, I don't want to be lower status. I'm going to go to the gym. So you see, you see the difference here. You're not relying on that, on that human uh, thinking willpower that's, that's notoriously weak. You're actually making the animal part of your brain work for you. Now, a good easy way that you can do this also is there's this website called Stick. It's S-T-I-K-K dot -K com where basically you formalize some commitment. You say, I'm going to do such or so action, and if I fail to do it, then it's going to take money away from you. Or there's a, a, a few ways to set it up. Or, or you can have it send, send money to a charity that you hate. Like, like if I don't follow through with this commitment, then it's going to, going to donate $50 to some pro-abortion group or something. So if you don't want to be complicit in that kind of thing, then you have to follow through with your commitment. So very powerful incentive to keep you from breaking your commitments. Okay, now the second way that you can keep your animal mind in line is to avoid perverse incentives. Now, perverse incentive is an economics term, if you never heard about that before. It's just an incentive that exists that pushes you towards something that is not in your best interest. So, uh, the classic example is giving a welfare credit for having children, right? So, you're going to reward people who can't afford to have children to have children. You're going to give them extra money because they had children they couldn't afford, right? That's called a perverse incentive. And our society is absolutely full of perverse incentives. But you and in your individual life can get rid of those to some extent. Now, one of the biggest perverse incentives that I see is going back to what we were talking about before about status. How in a lot of social circles, you get status points for doing things that are against your goals. I mean, if you think about the social justice warriors that are, that are like spending all day complaining on Twitter, well, they have perverse incentives. Their friends are, are encouraging them to do things that are basically ruining their own lives, right? Those people aren't happy sitting there on, on Twitter complaining all the time, and they certainly aren't accomplishing anything. And it could very well be that your social circle, your friends, maybe even your family, are providing perverse incentives for you. So I think about like when I would go out with, with my friends, if, if you hang out with normal people, normal people will almost always hold you down. You really have to try to avoid normal people. But anyway, so I, I was thinking um, when I would go out with my friends, like if I, I drink two or three beers and then I'd stop, uh, because I didn't want to be have a hangover the next morning and you know sleep till 11 and then waste the rest of my day being miserable and having brain fog well uh, because I stopped drinking my friends would say oh you're so lame you're not fun right basically because I'm doing something that is good because I'm restraining myself because I am doing what I should do or at least doing less of what I should not do uh, to meet my goals in general I am I'm losing status among that social circle because of it. And yes, it's a little silly, the guy who's gonna act like a drunk idiot and then wake up at 11 the next morning and then watch football for the whole rest of the day is calling somebody else lame. But no matter how ridiculous the people's values are that you're hanging out with, they are always gonna affect you and your status in their eyes is going to affect you. The same thing could be said for school. Like I explained in this video, uh, if you go to school, well, school rewards you, raises your social status, gives you honors and awards for sitting down and doing what you're told to do. Well, in real life, sitting down and doing what you're told to do isn't going to get you very far, but 
if you sit in school for years and years and years and years and you learn that you get rewarded for doing that, well, that's a very perverse incentive. They are rewarding you to do something that is against your own best interest. And the same thing is true for most jobs, right? I mean, you, you sit there and you do what the boss tells you to do, and if you do it diligently and you don't ask any questions, you don't question any of the boss's judgment, then, then you get good scores on your reviews and, and you get promoted, et cetera, et cetera. So lots of perverse incentives there. And on top of that, uh, if, you, if you work at a desk job or you go to school, chances are they want you to sit down the whole day. And everybody knows that sitting down all the time is causing this horrible epidemic of back problems among basically the whole population, right? I mean, this is well documented. Everybody knows at this point, but still, uh, the vast majority of schools and the vast majority of offices will reward you for sitting down and being quiet. So if you want to get rid of those perverse incentives, you want to spend less time with those people who are, who are encouraging you to do things that are against your best interests, and maybe find some of the 5% of people that are actually interested in, in rising in life uh, and not just getting drunk on the weekends, and hang out with those people because those people will actually hold you accountable to what is good for you. Those people will help lift you up. Those people will encourage you when you're doing good things and will, will discourage you. You will lose status uh, when you're doing things that are against your goals. So you're aligning, again, you're aligning your animal brain with your actual goals in life. And then by the same token, you want to, I mean, if, you, if you're in school and you can get away from school, then absolutely you want to get away from school. Uh, or if you have a job which is encouraging you to sit down and shut up and, you know, just be, be miserable until you need back surgery, uh, you want to get away from that too because that's, that's putting perverse incentives in your life. And if you've noticed by now that, that the system, that the normal lifestyle that everybody lives, is full of these perverse incentives, then you're absolutely right. I mean, if you want to get away from these, it's going to require you to be kind of a weirdo by their standards. You just have to get away from normal people because normal people will destroy you. By the way, if you're finding this video helpful or interesting or amusing or you just like to listen to me rant, please do me a favor, hit the thumbs up icon because it makes YouTube algorithm like me better. And subscribe to my channel, of course, and hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button if you want more content like this in the future. And also leave me a comment below telling me which of these things you're going to implement in your own life. You know, that's a little bit of accountability right there because if you leave me a comment saying you're going to do it and then you don't do it, well, you've kind of lost status points. Okay, now the third way that you can align your animal brain with your goals in life is to get rid of temptations as much as you possibly can. And there's a lot of ways to do this. I mean, the, the most obvious ones are to get rid of the things that are in your house or in your workspace that remind you of something bad that you could be doing. So if you have junk food in the cabinet, uh, then probably you're going to be more likely to eat junk food than if you have to get in your car and go to the grocery store in order to buy it, right? The, the more difficult you make it to access these, these instant gratification things, basically the, the less instant they become, right? If, they re, if it requires work to go get the junk food, then you're gonna be less likely to go get the junk food when your guard is down and when you, your animal brain t takes over. So take the junk food out of your house. I mean, if you're addicted to cocaine, take the cocaine out of your house and delete the drug dealer's phone number from your phone, whatever you gotta do. If you're addicted to playing Xbox, dump your Xbox, throw it in the garbage, give it to a friend, you know, sell it, whatever. Or even if you don't wanna give it up forever, like let somebody borrow it for a while, just so it's out of your house. So when you're supposed to be working on your business or whatever it is that's actually supporting the goals in your life, you're not tempted to stop doing that and go play Xbox because you can't. Or if you're the kind of person who compulsively scrolls Facebook for four hours a day, well, get rid of Facebook on your phone, delete it. Maybe even delete your Facebook account. I mean, it's up to you. You know you know yourself how far you wanna go with these things, but the more you can remove easy access to these destructive behaviors that would be instantly gratifying, and you make them so they actually require work in order to be able to do, well, the more you're aligning your, your animal brain with what you actually wanna do with your life. And then there's probably a lot of things you could do like that on your computer too, right? If you have, if, you, if you're like playing computer games, for example, and you have a bunch of icons on your desktop of all your favorite computer games, well, just delete the icons, maybe even delete the programs. Or if you have bookmarks for your favorite porn sites or, you know, whatever it is that, that's wasting your time, um, then get rid of those, get rid of your bookmarks, get rid of any reminder of what, what destructive behaviors you could be doing. So if you stop right now and just like take out a piece of paper and a pen, go around your house and find all of the things 
that you could be doing that would would take you further away, that would keep you from honoring your commitments that you made, whether it's a New Year's resolution or something else, uh, just make a list of all those things that you have and figure out how you can make them less accessible. And if you want some social incentive along with that, then go down to the comments right there and type in what you were going to do uh, to make the, the instant gratification things that are, that are destroying your chances of meeting your goals, what you're going to do to make them less accessible. You're going to give away your Xbox, you're going you're gonna to delete your video games, whatever it is. And then if you want to go even deeper into how to mold your environment in a way that's going to support your success and your goals in life, if you want uh, really radical ways to do that, then I, I recommend you check out this video, which is going to give you some great ideas for that. And of course, if you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you'd share it with some other people that might also benefit from it. And of course, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe.